Hello everyone and welcome to another video with me, Sammy from Ainsef Sounds. In this video I'm going to show you how to make a very short, uh, tight pluck sound. But actually the focus is going to be on a, on a technique that you can use for any kind of sound, be it a bass or a lead. And it's really to emphasize the attack. So anytime you want just a bit more transient, a bit more punch, uh, here's a technique I'm going to show you to possibly get that desired effect on the track you're working on. So I'm going to use strobe 2. This is not actually out yet, but it will be out fairly soon as far as I understand. I'm not 100% sure how soon, but it, it's pretty much finished from what I can tell. Pretty stable. In fact, I haven't really had any crashes with it since the latest update. So it's really good. Um, I have to say I really like it. I like the new look. It's got built-in effects this time, a couple of new ones. It's on arpeggiator. Uh, so maybe I'll do another video showing Strobe 2 in more detail, but for now I'm using this because I really like the graphical display and in particular what I'm going to do now is going to be displayed really clearly for you. So let me just play what I've got. I've um, put down a few pads. These are actually from, they should be in the factory bank once it's out. Uh, I did have to bounce them because as I'm recording video, um, it's just too CPU intensive. So I bounce those out. Uh, one of them still running here though. And this is going to be our pluck sound. Um, at the moment, the filter's open, so let's just have a listen. I'm going to close the filter down. And you can see that on the display, very nice display of the filter curve. Now, I'm going to apply the envelope, and that's this envelope here, and you can see the shape. It's a pretty strong transient, so let's bring this up. I'm going to put it about 50. Okay, so now if I lengthen this, or shorten it. Okay, so I'm going to get a different kind of curve out of this envelope now. I want it to be tighter, but I don't want to just shorten the decay time. I'm going to go to the modulation envelopes output, which is, um, this is like the modulation matrix in most synths. You select your source here and you use it to modulate any parameter you want, and I'm going to modulate the decay time of the envelope. So the envelope is modulating itself, it's recursive modulation. And if you're not used to this, it might seem a little counterintuitive or strange, but I want you to take a look at the curve as I do it, and take a listen to how the shape of the envelope affects the filter differently. You can even see it modulating itself on the display. It's quite a different sound. Very tight. Let's change it to linear just to see what happens. change the attack and see how that affects it. Okay, so say I like it like that. Okay, say I like it like that, it's pretty clicky. Um, and uh, of course there's another technique you can do to apply this to the pitch. Um, problem we have here is we're going to be using the same envelope to open the filter as we are for the pitch. It's not going to be flexible enough for us. So if you're on a synth and you just don't have another envelope, um, there are a couple other things you could do. In this synth in particular we've got the, the LFO, which is, you can configure the LFO so that the shape is very much like uh, an envelope here. And let's say we slow it down and we cause it to re-trigger 
So we'll make it mono, and it's going to re-trigger with every note. Let's just see what happens if we assign this to pitch. Okay. Uh, what's going on here? Oh, it would help if we chose the right shape. <laughs> okay. So let me just open that up a little bit. You can see if I make that very short. And very fast. Let's open that up slightly. So you can hear it gives it a little pinch. I could apply this again to the filter. Okay, so that can add just a little bit. Now the final thing I wanted to show you though is actually changing the envelope shape. Um, if you bring the sustain right down say to the center and the decay down below it, You'll notice it's a lot tighter. You just need to turn up the output to compensate for the sustain level. Let me remove this modulation. Because this is a cleaner way of doing it than pitch modulation, depending on the synth, in my opinion. And you can hear it's a very snappy transient now. And again, you can apply this envelope to the decay. So these subtle tweaks allow you to get a tighter envelope shape, uh, change the character of the synth. And um, it may not sound a lot at first, but if you were to A-B this now with the original, so let's just say I turn this to nothing. It's quite a different sound compared to what we had. It's a lot less controlled, a lot less precise. And I just think this sounds a lot better for this track. Of course, if you have a sharp transient, you do have to watch out in the mix. It might cause some problems. Right now, we're in a sort of uh, a break where there's no drums or anything, so it works really well. And of course, you can apply this to your bass parts. You can apply this to big super saws to give it just a little bit of click on the beginning of the sound. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Do let me know if you want me to do a more in-depth video on strobe two. It's not too different from strobe one. Uh, the main differences in the effects, the arpeggiator, and this, which is a preset morphing feature. Thank you for watching. Do let me know what you'd like to see in the comments below. And take care.